Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing yet another edition of the bi-weekly wishlist or washout. If you're new to my channel, if you're not seen the series before, what I do is every other Wednesday go through all the new makeup releases that I see on Instagram, and I decide if I'm going to be adding anything to my wishlist or if everything's a total washout. I actually missed the last edition of the BWOW two weeks ago because I had the second shot of my Pfizer vaccine, and as of this weekend, I'm now fully vaccinated. Heck yes. Uh, but that second shot did knock me on my butt, and I was kind of out of commission for a day or two and I didn't have time to film that BWOW so we have a lot to talk about because of that but then also because of some brands like there's I have a list of like two or three brands that are closing and there's one major controversy that like I know we have to talk about so we should just go ahead and get started. I literally have like notes I have a whole page of notes and this is only like part of it I only took notes for like the beginning of the video so oh it's gonna be a bit. So let's start with some bullshit that's what we're gonna start with so Ofra Cosmetics. I guess um, there are co-owners of Ofra. There's actually a woman named Ofra something something. And then there's, it looks like her husband. Um, and this was posted on, I believe, the owner's Instagram. So this is the picture. This is, I believe, the owner's husband who is a co-owner uh, having a Donald Trump hat on, Make America Great Again hat, the American flag, and then in his left hand he's doing a white power symbol that's a symbol that has been proven to be a white power symbol and especially in this context it's clear as day so this is some bullshit of the highest degree um because of this people have done some digging and i didn't see this when it happened before but i guess ofra previously had a another controversy where their main twitter account like their ofra cosmetics twitter account was liking far right wing donald trump-esque supportive tweets and back then, they actually said they got hacked. And that's why those tweets were liked, which as we can tell now, both the owners are Trump supporters, so that's a lie. And actually, I think as of recently, people were still pulling up screenshots so that the owner and the official for a Twitter page was still liking Donald Trump supporting tweets. So disgusting, absolutely disgusting. I think Ofra is now doing some um, damage control for PR. I know just about every beauty guru who has worked with Ofra has put out a statement and they're doing their best to cut ties, except for Jen Lowe's reviews. I, I don't really like to disparage other creators, but when someone is talking as much out of their ass as much as Jen has, it's ridiculous. There's a reason why no one like is really friends with her anymore. Like she used to be really close to like Smoky Glow and some other people. They cut ties and I can see why. Uh, she never knows how to take constructive criticism. Like when she when this first came out, she literally was talking about how oh that that symbol that white that white supremacy symbol it wasn't used as that symbol until 2017. So we don't know for sure whether he's doing it because of that. When you look at the picture and you see the Donald Trump hat, you see like context matters. Anyway, I stopped supporting Jen Love's reviews after the whole AOC fiasco, but even before then, she had a repeated uh, pattern of behavior, of ignoring people of color, downplaying their feedback, and just like being like an ignorant Karen, <laughs> essentially. Like when at this point, there have been so many instances of her being or of her excusing and supporting racist behavior that you have to double, like, you have to really think, okay, so why does she keep defending this stuff? I'll leave you with that to think about. Uh, but I don't support Jen Love's reviews and all the shit that's come out about her. I think she's now backtracking and saying, oh yeah, so I'm cutting ties with Ofra too, blah, 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 but it's too little too late. I honestly think, I, I don't know why people watch her anymore, to be quite honest. It's it's disgusting. It's disgusting what she's been doing. And it's disgusting what Ofra is doing. So not only did they post to this picture of the white power symbol, not only did their of official Twitter account like pro-Donald Trump tweets, um, I think there's also proof that they donated to Donald Trump's campaign in both 2016 and 2020. So Ofra is disgusting. <laughs> so not buying anything Ofra. I don't think I own, I think I've only owned one Ofra, one or two Ofra products and I both, I got them both in subscription boxes. So I've never directly bought from Ofra, which I'm actually kind of glad that I never did. Um, and I never will <laughs> buy. Disgusting. Um, and if anyone wants like receipts for what I just said about, you know, the Ofra cosmetics issue or the Genlo's review issues, there's been a ton of threads on Reddit. So I'll go ahead and I'll link some resources down below so you can see like the original videos, the original tweets and stuff and, you know, come to your own conclusions. All right, next, there's a couple of major like beauty brands that are now closing, which is kind of sad. 
Okay, so the first brand that I see that is now closing is Marc Jacobs Beauty, which was kind of surprising to me. I feel like it wasn't too long ago that a bunch of these, like, uh, what are they called? Like more fashion houses came out with beauty brands. And I'm wondering if all of them are going to kind of go the same way because their prices are exorbitant, very high prices. But I don't think that their sales are enough to sustain them kind of like their fashion is because makeup, while it is still a high profit margin, um, it is a high markup. I do think that there is more upfront cost in maintaining and producing makeup than there is in typical fashion. Please educate me if that's incorrect, but I kind of just assume that from what I know about makeup production, especially because like makeup is a um, expirable consumable as opposed to most fabrics. Can fabric expire? I don't think so. <laughs> but I saw on Twitter, um, I guess some people had reached out to Marc Jacobs because everything was on sale, I guess. Everything on their website was on sale. Everything like through Sephora was on sale. Um, and then I think it leaked, like someone messaged them and it leaked that they are actually going to be closing just the beauty part of the brand. Um, as far as I'm aware, the fragrances are not being you know, discontinued. So like the perfumes from Marc Jacobs, I don't think I've ever actually tried any outside of a little sample bottle, but those are still gonna continue to be available. And the, like the clothing and the bags are still gonna be available. It's just the makeup that they are discontinuing. I have to say there were quite a few products that I actually did enjoy from Marc Jacobs. I did like the Remarkable Foundation. That was one of the, the first higher end foundations I ever purchased. And then actually my very first pen that palette, let me see, it's right here. My very first pen that palette was a Marc Jacobs palette. So that was very close to my heart. I had gotten that, I believe, I was so excited to find that on sale at a Marshalls. So I'm pretty sure that Marc Jacobs palette I got at Marshalls for like $20, and then I panned it for my very first pan that palette. Um, if you wanna see that playlist, I'll throw it up in the cards. But I, I can see why there haven't really been any big Marc Jacobs releases that I've been excited about. And I have to say, um, I know a lot of people really like like their setting sprays and their primers, but I know a lot of their new releases were heavily scented setting sprays and primers, like the coconut. I hate like fake coconut scent, so I couldn't really use any of those products. And I know they had they were really heavy on the coconut line. On top of that, I know that they had like that big Omega like bronzer that was really popular, but I tried <laughs> several of those in store to like swatching them out, you know, pre-COVID obviously. But those were so orange. Every single Marc Jacobs bronzer that I tried was just like Cheeto orange. So I never bought one because like they're expensive, they're huge, um, but just orange, just so orange. I don't think they had a really good shade range on the bronzers either. So again, nothing really excited me about them. So this isn't really too surprising, but it is a little sad Like because I, I had a little bit of a sentimental point with this brand. So it's kind of sad to see them go. But I am interested to see, you know, what other fashion houses, makeup lines are gonna go that way. Like, are we gonna see Givenchy kind of do the same thing? Are we gonna see this from YSL? We'll see. Another brand that is now closing its doors is Coastal Scents. Coastal Scents posted this, I believe, on their Instagram story. Um, and it says, after 16 years of serving the makeup community with high quality products and affordable prices, our journey has now come to an end. And this is kind of sudden because it says, sadly, Coastal Sense had to close. All open orders will be automatically refunded. So this kind of came out of nowhere. They didn't announce it and have a sale. They're just like, bam, it's closed, we're done. Which is sad. I think I've only tried, I don't know if I actually tried any of their products, but I know they're big 88 palettes. Those were like one of the most popular products that was on YouTube when I first started watching YouTube. But back at that time, I couldn't really order anything online. And that's really the only place, at least in my area, you could buy Coastal Scents was online. Um, but I really, I, I remember thinking I always wanted one of those big palettes, which, ooh, how far have we come from that? But I remember that they used to be all over YouTube and they were kind of like Morphe before Morphe was Morphe, you know? They were affordable, they were huge, they were, you know, cheap products. And some of them might've been good, some of them might've been bad. Um, but yeah, it's sad to see, you know, another piece of makeup history kind of fade away, you know, because 16 years isn't nothing to like, what was I going to say? 16 years, you can't, isn't, why, what's the phrase? It's like, it's nothing to shake a stick at. Does that make sense? I, who knows? I need to like have another coffee or something. Oh my God. This is what I get for filming all day. And this is the last video that I'm filming. So... <laughs> Anyway, it's, it's again, sad to see it go. And I think it has to be a combination of just, you know, COVID the last year and it's tough, you know? Okay, so let's get into some stuff that I was tagged in. First of all, 
I think I talked about this makeup brush set in a previous Be Wow, but I still can't believe Morphe has the audacity to do this. But they came out with a collab and it was like a hundred dollar makeup brush set. A hundred dollars from Morphe. It's it's ridiculous. So anyway, I was tagged in this um, KJ Bennett Beauty posted on their, um, I believe this is Instagram stories, that uh, one of their friends got a PR mailing of those brushes and he looked at that and he said, I'm a, con I'm a cosmetic developer. I can verify that a painted compressed wood chip handle with a painted aluminum ferrule is the cheapest possible way to manufacture a makeup brush. And this is $98 for a set. So as you can see, he like chipped off like the paint and you can see it's like a really cheaply constructed brush and it, it looks like trash. And the fact, like, honestly, I don't think anything that Morphe could sell would be worth $100, even in like a bundle set. But I really don't know what the hell Morphe is trying to pull off here. They're trying to come off as more high end because it's, it's not working. It's not. It's really not. So yes, I implore you, please don't buy Morphe brushes. I've, I, back in the day when Morphe was huge, I tried a lot of Morphe brushes. Most of them are trash. There are a few that I still use to this day, but to be honest, the amount of money I spent and how many brushes I had to go through just to find some decent brushes, absolutely not worth it. <laughs> not worth it at all. Next, another random ass product that I got tagged in, which what the hell, JLo? JLo Beauty is coming out with a uh, bird seed. <laughs> Birdseed, it's showing it's vitamins. Oh, that's so stupid. They're calling it the inner love, that inner love dietary supplement. Come on, JLo, you're making all of us Puerto Ricans look bad. This skin loving capsule is packed with 12 essential vitamins and minerals to fight the signs of aging where they start. Mm. So while your JLo Beauty skincare faves tackle anti-aging on the outside, that inner love gets the job done on the inside. Okay, so. First of all, why are we so against aging? I mean, I, I, I never really understood that. Like, do we have to, I don't, anyway, that could be a whole video in, its of, in and of itself. But why you, I just, I immediately lose respect for anyone who is not like uh, in the medical space shilling supplements. Even if you are in the medical space, if you're shilling supplements like purely to make a profit, you're disgusting. Um, but especially so if you're just like an influencer or a celebrity or a Tati Westbrook and you just come out with vitamins and I just, uh, this is, mm, I'm sure they're going to be expensive. They're going to be way too expensive. And this is only 30, so it's like a month's worth of vitamins. It's a, it's a general women's multivitamin. Just go to CVS and buy a multivitamin if you need vitamins. Talk to your doctor first because most people, if you have a well-balanced diet, you don't need vitamins. That's what vitamins are. They're supposed to supplement if you don't have a well-balanced diet or if you have a medical issue and you need to specifically to have a supplement. Oh my God, this makes me so upset. <laughs> There's already enough misinformation out there. We don't need to be adding to the pile. We don't. All right, next product I got tagged in is, is this thing. This is from Makeup Revolution and this is the Maxi Reloaded Nudes Eyeshadow Palette. When I first saw this, I was kind of speechless. Like, this looks... I feel like this kind of jumbled palette design works well if you actually have color. When this is just, like, every shade of brown, it, like, I don't, I, like, I don't know why, but it kind of infuriates me, you know? It, it, oh my god, what am I, what are you supposed to, this is, A, it's just way too big of a palette. How many shades? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This bitch is gonna make me do math. 45 shades. 45 shades of brown. Nobody needs 45 shades of brown. No one, what, oh my god, what is this? Oh, oh my god. I saw this a week ago and I had time to digest it and I still, words fail me, words fail me. I was gonna say, even if you are like brand new to makeup and you need some, no one needs this many. And I'm sure like there are better formulas you could get nudes in than Makeup Revolution, okay? Okay, um, don't buy this, please. For the love of all that is holy, don't. 
All right, so moving away from stuff I was tagged in, I actually was just scrolling Instagram and I saw this and I'm actually really excited. What, is this the first positive in today's video? Wow. Uh, but this is from e.l.f. They're coming out with a new putty primer. This is an acne fighting putty primer, which I can definitely use because I've been breaking out. I've got a breakout here. I've got a breakout up here that's been there for like weeks now. I think it's just like a really bad um, scar now is forming there, um, but I could definitely use this. So let me read a little bit about what the actual primer is. This is a makeup primer formulated with acne fighting ingredients to calm irritation while smoothing skin for a flawless and even complexion. It helps prevent the development of new acne, it reduces redness, and smooths skin to prep for makeup, which I could use all of those, especially with like the mask, which I have to say, does anyone else who's fully vaccinated like still want to wear their mask? Like, because I don't trust anybody. Like, I've never gone anywhere yet where they ask to show proof that you're vaccinated. So I don't trust people <laughs> to do the right thing. Anyway. Um, it has 1.8% salicylic acid and it has zinc, um, and kaolin, kaol, kaolin, kaolin, K-A-O-L-I-N, that's what it has. <laughs> um, but this, I really want to try this. Um, I love the original putty primer. I have a couple of other putty primers that I also enjoy from e.l.f. I think it's a really great product. I think it's really affordable. It's $9 and the, the primer lasts a good long time. So it might seem a bit much for the drugstore, but that primer lasts you a long time. Uh, so I'm excited. I really want to try this. <laughs> So I think I'm gonna keep an eye out. I don't think I'll place an online order just to pick this up. Um, I don't need to place an Ulta order anytime soon either. Yeah, so I'm hoping one of my local, I actually have a really good CVS nearby me now, so I'm hoping that they have it in stock, you know, not too long after it's released, but I will definitely be picking this up. Uh, Morphe, speaking of Morphe, Morphe is coming out with a pride collection. I know uh, rainbow capitalism is just a bit much you know, there's just, everyone's coming out with a pride collection, which, I don't know, like, I just, I feel like trying to capitalize off of something that not really too long ago was, I don't know, I, I, I have complex feelings about massive corporations profiting off of pride, and I don't really like it, to be quite honest. Um, but especially Morphe, I think they came out with the Pride Collection before, um, but it's just a rainbow palette and Morphe is trash quality. You can get, you can get rainbow palettes for, you know, better quality, better prices. Don't go to Morphe. <laughs> oh, speaking of, um, fashion house makeup brands, Armani Beauty is coming out soon with a multi-use color bomb, which... Mm, it looks pretty. I kind of like the shades. I don't even, I don't even want to know how much this is going to be. It's going to be expensive. I think the only thing I've tried from Armani Beauty have been samples of their foundations, which have actually been pretty nice, but I've never pulled the trigger and bought, I bought one yet. Um, but I like how these look. Dang it. <laughs> All right. ColourPop is coming out or has already come out with three new palettes and it looks like these are exclusive to Ulta. Um, they have Lust for Dusk which as much as I like that name, that is just some dust, that is some dusty shades. Those are dusty shades. Um, high Tide is really cute. I actually like the High Tide palette. It's got a really cute like teal color story. It looks perfect for the summer. That is adorable. Take that one. Um, Fine Feathered, it's all right. It's just kind of a pink palette. You know, to be 100% like honest, I'm pretty sure at one point ColourPop has come out with all of these palettes before. I think at this point, they're probably just moving shades around and redoing packaging. I really don't think much else is happening. Okay, so um, I think I've already like talked at length about how I don't like celebrity skincare brands. So I mean, this product is trash and I would never buy it because I don't buy celebrity skincare. I just want to take a moment to appreciate the packaging. I hate it. I hate the brand and I don't like celebrity skincare, but this packaging is freaking adorable. It's pastel, it's beautiful. I love, I love the, 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 God, whoever designed this deserves a raise. That's beautiful. God dang it. <laughs> All right, this is another limited edition collection from MAC. This is the Botanic Panic. Damn it, that's a cute name. Um, I've learned my lesson about buying limited edition collections from MAC. They're trash. <laughs> I swear, that Boom Boom Bloom collection it was the worst thing that's, uh, that's ever happened. And I actually bought one of the damn products. Um, anyway, uh, so not buying this. I actually like the eyeshadow palette. I kind of want to see it. Do they have it a better picture? The packaging is stunning on the eyeshadow palette. And the shades look cute, but I don't see, where are the swatches? I don't see swatches here. Um, so I, the, yeah, so the palette looks pretty cute. 
um, but I don't know how pigmented those shades are, especially that green. I, I don't think that green would show up that pigmented, but I like the idea here. Um, I just, I know from my experience and from what I've seen, I will never again purchase anything limited edition from MAC because those collections recently, recently, like the last couple of years, have just not been, there's been no quality control whatsoever for those. Which is sad because I was watching some makeup archive videos from, um, Abby Williamson and Mac used to do some cool ass collections like why couldn't they why wasn't I into makeup when those came out like I would have gotten those but like these recent ones then no no plan so uh, our great friends at Kendo Vegan Beauty with Kendo with Vegan Beauty Kindness with with the most beautiful vegan veggie burgers and doing kind things Kendo Vegan Veggie Burger <laughs> I gotta brainstorm some other things to say about it. Um, anyway, so they're coming out with a new palette, but I saw this packaging. I saw this palette, I saw this picture, I saw this packaging. And I was like, oh, Essence came out with a new palette. <laughs> no, this is Kendo Vegan Beauty and all of her friends. What the hell? Oh my god, who is, who is the head designer for Kendo Vegan Beauty? At this point... I really wanted them to make a comeback because I love the aesthetic. I love the dark, grungy aesthetic. I want to keep like those beautiful blushes and the lipsticks. It's an amazing lipstick formula, but like they're, none of their new product releases are going well. It's like, who, who, who signed up on this? Who signed off on this? Who, it had, this had to go through how many approvals? And it's basically, at this point, it's basically like Tarte with different packaging and it's, it's, it's sad. It's really sad. Um, but yeah, so this packaging, eh, the swatches, like, look at these shades. They're all, like, bright neutrals, except for, like, one green. Ugh, okay. Um, so not interested in the Essence Vegan, Kendo Vegan Beauty with Friends and We Do Good Things and Kindness and Beauty palette, because it looks cheap. I gotta say, that packaging looks hella cheap. And how much is it? There's no price yet, um, but yeah. So Manny Emiway's Lunar Beauty Company is coming out with a like updated version of the Life's a Drag palette. This is called Life's a Drag Facelift. And I have to say, I actually really like the newer palette better than the first palette. I think this has a really nice balance of like neutrals and colors, and you can kind of break them up into like nine pan palettes, and then you've got some shimmers in the middle. Honestly, if this was any other brand, I'd buy this. But I personally have a rule that I'm not buying from anyone that was in that kind of YouTuber sphere. Like that sphere, you know, the 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 Nikita Dragon, the uh, Manny Emiway, Jeffree Star. I'm not buying from any of their brands at all. Um, so if another brand came out with this palette, I'd probably pick it up. Um, but I'm not going to be buying it. Here's another ColourPop eyeshadow palette. What the hell? What is this? I feel like I need that gif or that video of um, Michael Jordan. And he was like, stop, get some help. Like, ColourPop, come on. I'm not going to roast all the browns again because I literally just did that with the Makeup Revolution palette. But gee, you really? Really? Ooh, so a lot of people were heated about Urban Decay and Prince. <laughs> so I guess they actually got the rights from the um, estate of Prince to make a Prince collection, and these are the the, sh the these are the, these are what they came up with. So not as colorful as they should have most likely been. Um, I have to say the packaging spot on. That packaging looks phenomenal, amazing. Uh, the shades themselves, especially in the pan, those look washed out. Those look ashy already and they're not even like on oh anyway so yes i'm not gonna be buying this what do you guys think i guess chanel is celebrating 100 years of the brand this year so they're coming out with a new eyeshadow quad and it's their iconic number five um and it's got five four shades in the quad yeah i don't see swatches it just it looks kind of bland I don't even know how much it's going to be, but I know I'm probably not going to be. 
Ooh, this is, mm, what the hell? So this is from Westman Atelier, and this is a lip palette, and it's cream, and the shades are just all up in each other, all up right next to each other. They're neighbors. They're friends. They're more than friends, actually. They're, they're touching. <laughs> um... Yeah, and this is in this little thing. It is uh, eighty five dollars, eighty five dollars, and it's already sold out. What the hell? What what in the good golly? Good yeah. Blah. Anyway, uh, so it's going to be a uh, a negatory. So this product, I saw this on Instagram, and I immediately like went, "Oh, I'm gonna buy it!" Like, I'm getting this. <laughs> This is from Natasha Denona, and Natasha is coming out with new uh, liquid blushes. So these are the Puff Paint Liquid Blush Serums. There's three shades, um, and they look stunning. They look beautiful. I, I really want these. <laughs> I want all of them. They're $22 each, or they say in a bundle for $56. I really hope the bundle comes to Sephora. If I could get that bundle at Sephora, I'm immediately going to pick it up as soon as it's available. And it's going to be available May 26th. <gasps> it's already available! This is what I get for falling behind in my filming. Okay, so I'm checking Sephora. I do not see um, the bundle on Sephora. I just see the individual um, shades, and I want them all. I want them all so much. So I'm gonna pick this up at some point soon. Um, but I, oh my god, I cannot wait. They look, they look beautiful. I've been seeing her use them like in posts and on her story. And I just, I've been on like a cream and liquid blush kick. And this was just like a perfectly timed release. It's, I'm excited. And honestly, $22, I feel like is reasonable for like Natasha Denona to come out with a product like this. Like I feel like she's actually been recently at least getting a little bit better with her pricing. Okay, so also Morphe 2 revealed these little thingies, and they're literally the same exact component as like the Kaja Bento boxes. Literally the exact same, like down to like the color and everything, just... Mm. Um, the only Kaja product I have is like a face product, and I really do enjoy it. I've never tried their eyeshadows out before, um, but like this, I literally saw this and I thought it was Kaja. I did not think it was Morphe, so yeah. But what can you expect? You can't really expect a company like Morphe to be like original, right? <laughs> okay, so I guess A-Rod partnered with Hims to create concealer for men. Why can't you just use concealer, bro? I mean, at this point, I feel like it's 2021. I feel like anyone who wants to wear makeup should be able to wear makeup. And like this, like the slate packaging, like the, oh, this is concealer for men. It's just kind of silly. <laughs> Um, yeah. I mean, if you want to, if you have got a spot to, like, cover up, or if you want to, like, have a base on for, like, pictures, or you want to stand out a little bit more, feel, feel free to use any makeup. You don't have to be limited to just what's marketed to men. Just buy a decent concealer. <laughs> anyway. Um, also, I just went to the comments to see what people were saying about this concealer, and someone wrote, hey, does it cover up cheating on JLo? I don't really know celebrity news, but that was really funny. <laughs> So Makeup Revolution came out with a CC skin tint. So this is the Revolution Pro Cream Skin Perfector CC Tint. It's $16. That's a bit much. That's right. Well, I guess that's around the price of the um, e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. Hmm. I don't know if I would try this one out. I kind of have a decent amount of CC creams now. What do you guys think? And then, of course, we have another ColourPop collection. This is the So Very Lovely Summer 2021 collection. I have to say, it's different of them to do a pop of lilac instead of a pop of blue in the palette. Um, they've got lippy sticks. I think that's a blush. That blush looks really cute, if so. And then that's kind of the only thing that I see. Um, yeah, it looks like a blush. I think it's a blush. Are you a blush? Yeah, Super Shock blushes. So that looks really cute, but... Yeah. yeah. Just not buying from Colourpop anymore because at this point it's ridiculous. Um, so I guess Il Maquillage is collabing for round two with Carly Bible. Um, but what I first saw was this, th these face palettes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and give her a pro because it looks like um, there are three of the face palettes. There's a light, a medium, and a dark. So, you know, thank you for doing the bare minimum for being shade inclusive. Thank you for having three face palettes. Um, but looking at these face palettes, what the, what the fuck? Like, look at, A, the amount of wasted space in the palette. 
B, I don't like the shapes of these. <laughs> like for me and my brushes, I have to say these should be like the highlighter, that pan shape for highlighter that looks okay. The pan shape for the blush, I hate small blush pans because I go under the big fluffy brush. And I know a lot of people do. It's hard to get in there and fully swirl it. If anything, I feel like maybe the contour shade should have been the smaller one because you kind of use a more chiseled brush to get the contour, right? And then the the blush should have gone in where the contour is on the left. Does that make sense? It makes sense in my head. Other than that, I like the actual outer packaging, but the, the layout and the shapes of the pans just get really bugs me. <laughs> and also they're $54 each. There's also some brushes and some lipsticks, uh, but I'm not like, I'm not jumping out of my seat immediately to buy anything. So ColourPop, I believe this is the sister brand, Soul, is coming out with a new face and body makeup. I, being 100% honest, not a single one of the ColourPop foundations I have ever tried has worked well for my skin. So I will avoid this. Like, can we, we can't really say avoid like the plague anymore, can we? Because we, we've seen that people don't avoid the plague. Um, but I will not be buying this, and I will not be looking into it. Speaking of bland mac collaborations in limited edition uh collections um they came out with the cruella collection uh what is this eyeshadow palette and i don't like their split pan like blushes they really don't look that great um the two side i have to say the two-sided liner i kind of like the idea of like a black and a white liner together like that i will give them that um other than that no oh, this looks this looks very cash grabby gimmicky also, has anyone um, either seen the movie or seen reviews of it? Because I watched a review. I'm not going to spoil anything, but apparently the movie is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> like, even for, like, a Disney live-action film. Like, man. Oh, look, it's another Morphe palette that you don't need. Ah, okay. So, something actually kind of interesting, which they should have done this a while ago, from Benefit, they came out with a bronzer palette. Um, so this has Hoola, I think this has all the Hoola. So Hoola Light, Hoola, Hoola Toasted, and Hoola Caramel all in one palette. So I have to admit, that looks nice. Um, I do not know if those shades would work well for people with deeper complexions. I have to say, I tried Hoola and it was, again, just so orange on me. It was, I was a Cheeto. I was more Cheeto than our last president, and it was ridiculous. I think I tried a sample of Hula Light, and it was just like, okay. So, like, I, there's nothing for me in the Hula family, as far as I'm aware, that would work for me. Um, but I have to say, this, this packaging, this presentation, um, they should have had this for a while, to be honest. I think with those box blushes and those boxed products, they were really, really, like, 2014, 2015, and then they never really brought it to modern times. And I feel like this finally does, but I think it might, it might be a little too late. Another ColourPop collab, ColourPop and Barbie. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it looks cute. It's pink. This is probably the one time when, like, the palette with a pop of blue would kind of sort of fit because it's Barbie. But, like, I don't know. Has ColourPop not ruined enough fond memories with shitty collabs just to get money? Ooh, so Dose of Colors did a collab with Nima Tang, and it looks spectacular. Spectacular. I want that coral lip set. That coral lip set looks beautiful. Just mwah. I want everything about that coral lip set. Um, I'm pretty sure it's sold out. Oh, you don't need it to be on. I'm pretty sure it's sold out, which is fantastic. But I hope it comes back in stock because, ooh, that looks gorgeous. Congrats, Nima. <laughs> All right, and to finish up for today, we're going to talk about a new foundation from Tarte. Tarte just came out with this new Hydroflex Serum Foundation. It's supposed to look and feel like your skin, be lightweight, skincare infused formula, 32 shades, and it's 30, oh wait, so it's Hydro Smoother and Blending Blush. So is that $39 with the brush? Hmm. So it's a serum foundation. It reminds me a lot of like the Ease Drop. So this kind of seems like Tarte's version of the Ease Drops. Um, I'm curious. I don't know about that price tag though. I mean, if that's 39 with the brush, eh, that seems reasonable. But I hope that they would have it available separate. Maybe a little cheaper. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, what do you think? Honestly, I can't remember the last time I actually, like, bought a Tarte product. 
So I think that's it for this week's edition of the Be Well. Thank you guys so much for being patient and kind with uh, the schedule changes I had to make because of that last vaccine appointment. It was important for me to step back and actually take a little bit of time because I think I mentioned in the um, community post that I made, I got up and I tried to do stuff and like work and be productive and then like I made myself worse. So I, I had to actually like rest for a bit. As a chronic like overworker, I'm bad at being and like taking time to actually step back and relax. So I'm hoping that over the next couple of weeks, I took off a few days, I've got summer Fridays during my day job. So I'll have more time to kind of rest and recharge and continue doing what I love, which is making videos. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know down below, like always, what you thought of all of these new releases. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.